welcome you to Steve Coach Katie Arena at the Goggin Ice Center. Game two of this series tonight between the Minnesota Duluth and Bulldogs and the Miami Red Hawks on the ice. It's Miami Hockey here on Red Hawk Radio. Kenny Shearlinger and Patrick Eschen with you here from Goggin Ice Center in Oxford. Minnesota Duluth won the game last night, a 4 nothing victory over the Miami Red Hawks. And Kenny, Miami did not play well at all last night. No, and they they did hang around for the rest of the game. They just a couple couple minutes in the second period was uh, a up and down time for them, and they let in three goals in a, about a minute thirty. And it, it just really was uh, what broke the camel's back there for the Red Hawks. And and Jordan Lewelski uh, came in and uh, did a good job, and uh, he's getting the start tonight for the Red Hawks and looking to get a win and even out the series here. So we are going to get our face off at center, and we're underway tonight. Dan Dreger, Nathan Wheeler, the referees, linesman TJ Likens, and Nick Huff. And the opening draw will go into the Bulldog end, into the left corner. Karch Bachman trying to get after it at the left hash marks, but he went down. And Duluth able to work this thing up. Mikey Anderson, far boards, gets hit at the blue line, and the puck up in the air at center, and taken back here by Peter Krieger. Same line that started last night, right back out there for Minnesota Duluth. Miami changing the lines a little bit this evening. Again, like you mentioned, Kenny Jordan Yahelski getting the start in net. Bray Crowder and Rourke Russell are the starting defensemen for Miami. And then the line of Bachman, Gruden, and Green are the offensive starters for the Red Hawks. And Josh Melnick still, up, still out with an injury. And Grant Hutton, the captain, is a healthy scratch this evening after getting a game misconduct penalty in the series opener last night. Scott like, Corbin with a puck from Miami. Yeah, like you mentioned, the Red Hawks are out with out with their two captains. So uh, somebody's going to have to come over and take take over this Red Hawk hockey team, leadership-wise. So down the left side with it, Riley Tufty trying to get a shot off on Yahelski, but instead fanned on the attempt with Miami defending him well. And Yahelski covers here with a minute eight here into this first period. So Miami again, the nine game winless streak looming over this program. They have a losing record now at 9, 10, and 4. And Miami has also allowed the first goal in seven straight games. Of course, they haven't won any of those games when they've given up the first goal. There's face off one on the right side by the Red Hawks and quickly back to the Duluth end. And it is Louis Rail for the Bulldogs and now skating it up. The far side for Duluth is Cole Kepke, but it's turned over at the far circle and back to center. In front of the Duluth bench, Ben Loun risks the puck into the zone and it wraps all the way around. Phil Nyes at the near boards couldn't stop it out of the zone. And River Ribshaw at center fires it in and a glove save by Shepard. As Miami offside right now, Gordy Green went into the zone before the puck and he didn't hear the offside call and he was going behind the net. So the faceoff will be at neutral ice. 18-19 left here in the first period. Both these teams get in their skates under them and nothing really doing uh, momentum wise here, but you gotta look for the Red Hawks to try to get some shots on goal, kind of ease their way into this game and just kind of come out firing and hopefully you can get a goal. Yep. Billy Exel out of the puck at center, backhands it off the glass and into the zone. Alec Mahalik behind the Red Hawk net, plays it up to Gordy Green, but he couldn't stuff it forward. And now the puck behind the Miami net in their own end. Jonathan Gruden played up left side. Karch Bachman got a stick on it, but in the Red Hawk zone and all the way back down the ice it goes. Or an icing. And three whistles here inside two minutes as we are exactly two minutes into this game. Pretty thin crowd tonight at Steve Katie Arena as the looming winter storm comes over the area. Last night's attendance, a little over 2,000 people. You'd imagine tonight would be probably under 2,000. River Rimshaw, backhand pass, far side of the Miami end, they get it out to center. Arch Bachman trying to steal it away inside the circle and Duluth will take it back over. It's Mikey Anderson circling back at his own end. Near side pass, Noah Cates, he fired that one all the way down the ice as he was looking for a cross ice pass for Peter Krieger but could not connect at the Miami line. And we get our third icing of the game here, two minutes and 20 seconds in. A little bit different pace from last night as we were going back and forth up and down the ice for quite some time in different stretches and lots of stoppage of play so far this, uh, this evening. Noah Jordan will take the face off for Miami to the right of Hunter Shepard. Jordan into the game tonight for the Red Hawks. Making his fourth appearance of the year, the freshman out of Toronto. It will be Christian Moe cycling the puck 
Down the near side, Mikey Anderson stopped it for Duluth and played out of the zone by Noah Cates, but a nice play by Rimshaw, knocked the puck out of midair and played it back to the Duluth end. But the Bulldogs take control again. Mikey Anderson skates it up through center ice all along, gets past the white jerseys. Now into the left circle, he skates it behind the Red Hawk net. Anderson, the backhand feeds, Scott Perunovic touches the puck for the first time. The, one of the top defensemen for Duluth feeds it to the line. Parker McKay got met with a body right there and couldn't play it deeper in the zone. And now he's got the puck in the near side Miami line. Riley Tufty right circle comes in. And the puck under the pad of Uhelski as he fired a shot in. Players came crashing into the net and knocked it off its moorings. And I believe we're going to get a penalty on this play against Miami. And they're going to take Rourke Russell to the box. And we'll see what the call is here as it will be a two-minute minor for a hook. So the Red Hawks shorthanded just like that. 16.53 to go in the first period. And they're going to have to kill some more penalties here. Last night's game was... Not good at special teams for the Red Hawks. They went 0 for 4 on the power play last night. Scott Perunovic at the right point. Noah Cates and then Duluth sets up after they win the draw. Perunovic right point, feeds it across. There's a one-time shot that's sent wide by Nick Sweeney. And Perunovic gets it back right point. Cross face to Sweeney, back to Perunovic. Middle of the blue line, he walks it toward the Miami bench. Noah Cates, top of the right circle, trying to feed it down low, and it was blocked there by Sinard. And Phil Nice takes control of the loose puck and rifles it down the ice. And Miami will get a full four-man change not, uh, 30 seconds into the power play. Brunovich feeds Swainy at center. They're in over the line. Billy Exel goes back to Noah Cates. He's at the top of the right point. Cross ice to Perunovic. He'll walk over to the left side. Now Krieger, top of the right circle. Couldn't get it past Ben Lowndes skates. But Krieger will backhand this one at the blue line, trying to save it in the zone, and instead... It flies out of play, four rows up in the stands. And we get a neutral zone face off here with a 1-11 to go and the work Russell Miner. Minnesota Duluth actually gained a spot in the standings last night as they started the night uh, fourth in NCHC and ended up surpassing Western Michigan to take the third spot. So trying to gain more ground tonight with a couple more points. That'd be good news for them. They're in a chase right now at the top of the league standings. St. Cloud State, Western Michigan up there too. Western Michigan's having a great year. Swept Miami last weekend at Kalamazoo. Great Crowder trying to trap this puck in the far corner of Miami and it's Duluth able to quickly get in the zone and it becomes loose at the far half wall and fired back down by Brian Hawkinson. And Duluth here is going to quickly move it back up as Shepard came out of his net to play it. Couldn't connect, though, with Richards in the neutral zone. And this one comes all the way back down for an icing with 31 seconds to go in the power play. Correction, they actually passed up um, Denver last night because okay. Denver was uh, off. So they passed Denver for the third spot because that game at Colorado College was postponed last night. Yep. Of course, that winter storm, the same one that will hit this area tonight. St. Cloud, though, atop the league standings, 27 points they have. Western Michigan with 20. St. Cloud with over a two-game lead on the rest of the conference in first place right now. Duluth in over the Red Hawk line. Mackay, who got hit from behind as he got in over the blue line, and now the puck swords out to neutral ice as Mikey Anderson couldn't keep it in. Feeds across ice. Dylan Sandberg in over the right side. Riley Tufty right circle, gives it back to the right point for Anderson. Sandberg to the slot, and a backhand shot there from... Cates didn't go in, and now Gordy Green at the far half wall, give it off to Bachman as the penalty expires. Bachman down the right side, goes back to Green, he fired a slap shot in the circle, and blocked down by Sandberg, who's slow to get up. Now Gruden with a turnover at center, he comes in down the left side, behind the Duluth net, feeds it in front, loose puck at the slop, and nobody could get to it soon enough for Miami, and it comes back out to center, where it's picked up by Andrew Sinard. You know, back went off the near boards. Jonathan Gruden trying to reach after it after Anderson. Gordon Green picks up the loose puck. Bachman high slot over to Gruden for a shot for the far circle. But it was a good save by Shepard. And now Gordon Green has control behind the net. Dashke puts it in right point. Green fired it from the circle. And that went off the glass. Now it comes back up to the left point. Sinard fired it. It got tipped in front. Loose puck Whoa. as Bachman went down. He couldn't get a clean shot. 
And Duluth finally able to get this thing out to center and beyond as Bachman and Louis Rail had a little altercation behind the play in front of the Duluth bench, but nobody called. Puck at center ice now. Casey Keeling gets hit hard in front of the Miami bench, a little bit from behind. They won't call that. Now a battle ensues in front of the bench for Miami. Casey Gilling went down, couldn't get the puck. Brunovich takes it over, feeds it far side, and they center it to Billy Exel, and a penalty is upcoming here as Miller had the far half on the man. Exel was streaking down the slot. He got the feed, got tripped up, and a penalty here will be issued to Andrew Sennard as Duluth will head to the power play, their second of the game when we return. 13.37 to go first period. No score between Miami and UMD. This is Miami Hockey on Red Hawk Radio. You love them enough to do anything for them. Dad, can we make 200 cookies for my bake sale tomorrow? Let's do this. Including checking ESA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ag Council. If you love them enough to sit through their favorite boy band with them, <laughs> then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ag Council. If you love them enough to barely sleep, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, we'll always stay together. Probably? It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. 13.37 to go. First period here from Goggin Ice Center at Oxford. Face off to the right of Jordan Uhelski and Miami shorthanded here after a tripping minor to Andrew Sinard. Luth wins the face off in the offensive zone. Noah Cates had it left point. Goes back down to the half wall with it. As Luth now works it up to the near side. Scott Brunovich to the near circle for Krieger. Walks it up to the line. Then goes far circle and a fiend down low to Anderson. Anderson cross ice. Brunovich fired a shot blocked by Hawkinson. And now comes to the near corner. Duluth lost it. Puck gets free. Colby Roth in behind the net. Able to feed one out right point. Brunovich. Cross ice. Krieger at the line. Returns to Perunovic. As Duluth works it around the perimeter. Then he'll feed far side to Nick Sweeney. And then it works up the right half wall and got past Krieger as Monty Graham stuffed it out of the zone. And Miami gets a change with 1.15 to go in the Sennard minor penalty. Brunovich out of his own end for Duluth. Near side feed, Parker McKay. They're in over the Brad Hawk line. Taken though quickly back by Rimshaw. As Duluth lost it there when they entered the zone. And a minute to go now in the power play. Parker McKay feeds it back at his own end. Mikey Anderson skates out with it. Now McKay right side. Fires it in over the Red Hawk line. And first to it is Duluth. Richards got to it behind the net. Tufty missed the feed though. And it comes out to the right side as Parker McKay at the hash marks. Feeds it off to Tufty and back up to the right point for Anderson. He walks the line. Tufty right circle, a good shot saved by Uhelski. Rebound is cleared away by the Red Hawks. Out of the zone with 28 seconds to go in the Sinard Minor. And 12-01 left in the first period. Shots early on, 4-3 in favor of Miami. Mikey Anderson out of his own end. Feeds it far side for Mackay. Crowder stopped in there. Now it's Mikey Anderson in over the Red Hawk line. And he'll wait and get stopped at the far half wall. And Scott Corbett worked it out to center. But Duluth quickly takes it back. Richards feeds to the near side. Mikey Anderson, the full wrap around. Bray Crowder far corner. Couldn't control it. Now Mackay takes it over for Duluth behind the Miami net, but couldn't stuff it in front, and it finally expires. And Karch Bachman races up the right side of the ice. He's in over the Duluth line, the only Red Hawk in the offensive zone as Miami changing right now. Anderson gave it back to Tufty. Gruden takes it back, and his feet in front. Nobody was home. Rimshaw keeps it in at the line. And Sandberg here has it far side for Duluth and feeds it back to Anderson. It will slow the play down here with 11-10 to go in the opening period. Long stretch pass ahead, tipped into the zone by Latterout. Uh, Alec Mahalik rather in the corner for Miami trying to work it free. Christian Mose gets it to the right hash marks and Gruden will feed over to 
Alec Mahalik, who skates it up at center, but got disturbed at the Duluth line and taken over by Anderson, but he gave it up. Gordy Green tripped up, though, behind the net and finally gives it back to Anderson. And he feeds it up the right side here for Rourke Russell, who takes it behind the Miami net and skates it out to neutral ice. Try to fire it at the red line, but fan on the attempt, taken back by Duluth. Colby Rock up to Latterout. Now it's center Noah Jordan after he got a feed from his own end. He's in over the Duluth line and nice angle there by Roth to take it over far wall. And Roth got hit hard by Rimshot or Sirocchi rather in the corner. Now Latterout right side and Miller trying to backhand a shot, but they blow the play dead. It's, it's actually Louis Rail in the corner that got hit by Sirocchi and he just got to his feet now and will skate off on his own power. As he was a little shaken up after the hit against the boards there in the corner. Right now the officials discussing what they saw. And if there's perhaps a penalty that they might video review here. They cannot review a play if it's going to be a minor penalty, but they can review a play if they think it could be a major penalty. And right now, I believe we're going to get a video review as the three officials, two referees and one linesman, are discussing the play in front of the penalty box. And now the referees wearing the orange armbands are going to step in front of the monitor inside the box and talk about this. So we are going to get a review on the play that happened in the far corner when Soroki hit Louis Rail, and Rail was shaken up.